Hi friends, Krista here. Thanks for stopping by Books and Jams. I am so excited today to share with you all of the books that are on my radar for middle grade March. Well, I shouldn't say all of the books, but a lot of the books that are on my radar for middle grade March. In the past, I have given myself the challenge of reading 31 books in 31 days for the month of March. Since I'm reading mainly middle grade and middle grade books typically are much quicker reads, but this year I'm not giving myself the pressure of completing 31 books. However, <laughs> it's very possible that I will hit that goal because I have so many books on my radar. What I've done is I have three different stacks plus a library stack, which I'm not gonna talk about today. I'll save that for a checked out, what I have checked out video in a couple days. But I have here a couple different stacks of different books that I have chosen. I'm gonna start with this first stack that it will answer all of the prompts. Like these are the books that will complete the prompts that we've given or challenges that we've given for middle grade March. Of course, so many other books that I might read will also fit these prompts, but these are ones that just initially jumped out to me. So obviously the first book that I'm gonna talk about is The Brave by James Byrd. This is our group read. It involves a young boy named Colin who has a form of OCD where he counts all the letters of the words that are spoken to him and he has to say that letter, that number out loud. Colin keeps getting in trouble at school. He keeps being bullied. His dad doesn't really connect with him and so his dad sends him to live with his mother who is living on the on a reservation in Minnesota. I'm very excited about this book. I've heard such good things. It's very high on my priority list, obviously. For the month. For the prompt of a silhouette on the cover, I have had this book on my shelves for quite a while, The Evolution of Calpurnia Tate. This won a Newbery Honor a couple years ago. I'm not sure what year, and this is by Jacqueline Kelly. This book is a historical fiction. It's set in 1899, right at the turn of the century in Texas, and we follow young Calpurnia, who kind of doesn't like the expectations that are placed on women at the time. She also has a good relationship with her grandfather. I don't know um, what more it is about but I just I love this cover and so I wanted to read this one especially because it's a Newbery Honor book I have high hopes for it. For the family strong family prompt I would like to read Lost Girl by Anne Ursu. This is a book that was given to me for my Christmas book exchange with Sarah and Lindsay. This is about twin sisters and I believe one of them goes missing or they just kind of start to go their own separate ways because their personalities are very different or something along those lines. I really honestly don't know very much, but it was gifted to me and it's one that I definitely would like to read this year. For the travel journey adventure prompt, I really would like to read Escape from Aleppo by N.H. Senzai. In this one, we follow young Nadia who is escaping from Syria. She lives in Aleppo and has to escape because on her birthday, December 10th, I think 2010, is the start of Arab Spring and all of the conflict that takes place in specifically in Aleppo, but in Syria as a whole. So I, yeah, I just, I'm very interested in this story. Yeah, it's just something that is an important read and it's not like a fun side of adventure story, but it definitely will have some travel and journey elements in this one. So I'm very excited to read that. For the fairy tale elements, I have decided not to go with a retelling, but I'm gonna go with Malamander by Thomas Taylor. This is one that I've just heard so much praise for. And this came out, I think last year, and it involves some fun fairy tale esque creatures like a plucky orphan, a sinister man with a hook for a hand, a mechanical mer monkey, an egg that can grant wishes and the elusive Malamander who is a half foot, half fish, half man who holds the town in its deadly thrall. I've heard such high praise for this one and I just really wanna read it. So I'm using this for my fairy tale elements prompt. And then for the book set in the decade I was born, I'm going with Newberry's because it is a goal of mine to read all the Newberry medal winners in my lifetime. <laughs> I was going to pick the book that, that won the Newberry in the year I was actually born, which is The Grey King by Susan Cooper, but I think this is book four in a series. So I'm not going back to read book one. So I just grabbed a couple others that won in the 70s. So I have Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry by Mildred D. Taylor, and Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim by Robert C. O'Brien. So these are just two Newberries that represent really the next portion of books. This year, one of my goals is every month to vlog two different weekends in a month, possibly more than that here and there, but at least two weekends every month, I would like to do a weekend reading vlog. And so for March, I am choosing to focus solely on Newbery books during those two weekends that I vlog. So I'm hoping to read these two plus a ton more of Newbery Medal winners 
during the month of March uh, on those vlogging weekends. So I'm hoping to knock out some of the really small ones, maybe grab a bigger one. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet, but these represent a category of books that I'm going to be focusing on a couple different times in the month of March. So there's my first stack of middle grade books. The next book that I'm really going to add to that kind of priority stack is the choice that my patrons made for our Patreon book club. I gave them three middle grade books, Green Glass House by Kate Milford, Ooh. Echo Mountain by Lauren Wolk, and The Miraculous by Jess Redman. Honestly, I would love to read all three of these. I don't know if that will happen because they're all on the bigger side of things. But my patrons had the choice. My $5 and $8 patrons had the choice of which book that they would like to do for our Patreon book club. And Green Glass House was the clear winner. It was more than double, I think, or close to double any of the other choices. Um, this is a fun kind of mystery set in the wintertime, which is perfect because the beginning of March should still be pretty cold for most of us. And it, it takes place at this old hotel inn type of place called Green Glass House. Milo and Medi are there. They're both staff kids at Green Glass House. And then these secretive guests, elusive, mysterious guests show up and there are some puzzles and clues and a mystery to solve. It sounds like a lot of fun. I've heard some really good things about this one. So I'm very excited to read that one. But I am going to keep these two out as well. So these are going to stay out, out here in front of my face as as options for the month. So the next stack that I have to show you, I have four more books that were sent to me by Sarah and Lindsay in my Christmas book exchange that I've done with them for the past two years. And so these ones are kind of a priority. I would like to read through a big chunk of the books that they sent me. I did decently with that goal last year, but I want to continue to put these books in front of my face so that I maybe will pick them up. So the four that I have from them this year are Fever 1973 by Lori Hulse Anderson, which is about the Black Plague, I believe, and a family elements in that one as well. I have a Newbery Award winner, Dead End in Norvelt by Jack Gantos. I don't really know anything about this, but since it's a Newbery, it might get picked up over the weekend. I have The Miscalculations of Lightning Girl by Stacey Mc, Mc, McAnulty. McAnulty? I don't know how to say that, but this is a fun, bright cover. I think this takes place at a school setting, like really at a school and just accepting our differences and such. And then this is a historical fiction crossing Ebenezer Creek. Look at that beautiful silhouette. That could be an option for a silhouette, but this is by Tanya Bolden. And I believe this is set in the South and um, a woman um, seeking freedom. Mariah barely dreamed of freedom her entire life. General Sherman's march through Georgia passes the plantation where she's enslaved, her life changes instantly. So yeah, it's set in Civil War South and I am excited to read that one. So these are all options for the month. I'll set them down here. And the last stack that I have are books that were so kindly sent to me by authors. Some very recently, you will have seen them in very recent hauls and some quite a while ago that I still haven't read. And I feel very sad about that. I'm very eager to read a few of these in March as well. So I'll just show you these ones quickly. Smail Home by C.L. Williams, another one with a gorgeous silhouette. And this definitely has fairy tale vibes because I think this is about a village of little, like teeny tiny people who live at the base of this tower in Scotland and their lives become endangered and this young girl has to try to save them or something along those lines. So definitely some fairy, fairy tale vibes and the silhouette and it's a I mean it's a gorgeous printed hardcover so really excited for that one and I have this on NetGalley as well so this would knock out a NetGalley book which is another goal of mine this year I have Alessia in Atlantis by Nathalie Lane she is one of my subscribers and a wonderful commenter who recently wrote a book so I'm excited to get to this one very soon this comes out soon or just came out I can't remember but this would also fulfill the fairy tale retelling prompt because Atlantis is kind of a fairy tale setting, right? In this one, we follow Alessia, who didn't know that she's from Atlantis, but she finds out and then, yeah, somehow has family connections there and all of that. So family prompt, fairy tale prompt, again, could, could fulfill a couple of the different prompts. Recently, Jennifer Adam sent me her book, The Last Wind Witch, which I love this cover. It's stunning. Again, I think this one would also fit a fairy tale, 
like a fairy tale elements prompt. A fantasy debut following Brita, a 12 year old aspiring hedge witch on a journey, on a journey through a terrifying forest to a castle full of dark magic where she will encounter a wicked queen and a destiny, a destiny she could never have imagined. So that sounds really cool. Uh, and I'm very, very excited to read this one. This comes out in April. So yeah, I would love to read this and be able to tell you about it in case you're interested in grabbing it for yourself or for young kiddos that you know. I remember the box for Dor Dwarf Story by Professor W.W. W. Marplot. I remember when this box came and it had, I, I don't know if you guys remember, it had like a beard and a blow up hammer and it had such fun little elements to go along with it. Yeah, I just, I think this sounds like such a fun story. Artie finds a sweaty bearded axe swinging warrior dwarf scaring his dogs. Soon enough, Emma, Cry, and other middle school friends also find fairy creatures, elves, spriggans, pixies, and a hoped for dragon crashing into their normal homework doing backpack carrying phone charging school days. So it sounds like the fairy tale world and the real world collide in this story. And then I'm sure they have to solve some kind of a mystery or work together in some way. I just think that that sounds delightfully fun. And I'm very excited to read that one. I was recently sent Simone Lafray at the Chocolate and the Chocolatier's Ball. This one involves a journey through the city of Paris, as well as this mystery and where this young girl, Simone Lafray, um, is a spy and working undercover kind of in the footsteps of her spy mother. And I believe her father has a patisserie. Yeah, her father has a patisserie as well. So it's gonna involve delicious sounding foods, I'm sure. This is a little teeny tiny one. And I just think that it sounds delightful. So that is high on my priority list this year as well. And finally, the last book that I think was sent to me during the first middle grade March, oh my word, or the second middle grade March. But Travis Howe sent me Animal Control, The Hero's Apprentice, which just has a fun cover. I really love that. This one involves a foster child named Jack who dreams of one day joining this animal force or hero league, hero league named Animal Control. And um, but his decision to run away ultimately leads to the death of the world's greatest hero. Now he lives in a quiet life in a quiet town, believing his venture adventures are over, but we all know his adventures are probably not over. So this sounds like another one that would be great for the adventure prompt. And I'm so thankful that this was sent to me and sad that I haven't read it. So it's going on this stack as well. So I am not sure what I'll ultimately pick up during the month of March. I have tons more on my middle grade shelf of unread middle grade books including a ton of Newberries on my Newberry shelf, which I will show you, I'm sure, more of those throughout the month. But these are ones that are gonna live out here in this room. This is kind of like the walkway in between my between my kitchen and my living area. So I see this shelf all the time. I have my series that I'm in the middle of. Oh, speaking of which, I have a couple middle grade series that I might pick up too. <laughs> The world is my oyster in March. So this pile here is my priorities as well as Green Glass House for my Patreon book club. Other than that, I'm just gonna kind of go where the mood strikes and pick up a ton of middle grade books and just keep reading them. I will show you some that I have checked out from the library in an upcoming video, but I would love to hear from you. What are some of your priority reads during the month of March? Be sure to use the hashtag middle grade March so that I can find your video and check out what your TBR is. I cannot wait. This is like one of the most fun times of the year to see everybody getting so, so excited about middle grade books. It's gonna be a fantastic month. Make sure um, to check out Katie and Amanda's videos today to see what is on their TBRs for the month. And I look forward to hearing from you and chatting about more middle grade books. Also, all six of our winners for the giveaway have been chosen and reached out to and congratulations. And I think that's everything. <laughs> I really look forward to, to lots of middle grade chatter with you guys over the next few weeks. And I hope that you are getting excited. What are you gonna read first? Which one are you gonna pick up first? I really don't know. I'll probably save the brave for later in the month. I don't know, Malamander is kind of calling out to me. I don't know, we'll have to see in a couple days what I end up picking up first. I really look forward to chatting with you in the comments. I would love for you to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you haven't already for more fun content, not just middle grade content, but more fun content coming your way. And I will be talking with you in another video very soon. Bye.